children, and welcome back to Storytime with Winnie and Nan. This is Winnie, and I'm Nan. And the theme for today's show is all about winter. And the materials that you'll need to do the crafts for today's show are, you'll need one sheet of paper, three paper plates, one pipe cleaner, some crayons, some clear tape, and a scissors. So you can gather those materials so you'll be all ready to do the crafts today. And the first book that I'm going to share with you today is called Winter. And the author of this book is Anne Herridge. Winter by Anne Herridges. In cold places, the air is frosty. You can see your breath. The ground freezes. Lakes and ponds freeze too. Snow falls when the air is cold. The snow lands on the ground. Look how it can pile up. Icy wind blows the snow around. It is hard to see in a blizzard. Winter can bring a blizzard and heavy snow can fall. The snow, the sun is low in the sky in the winter. Shadows are long. There is not much daylight in winter. It gets dark before dinner time. Plants stop growing in winter. Some trees lose their leaves. Deer eat small twigs from trees and shrubs, and squirrels eat the nuts they hid in the fall. Some animals grow thicker fur to keep them warm. Sometimes the fur even changes color to match the snow. Some animals sleep through the winter. Bats sleep close together in caves. Mice sleep in burrows. Snakes and turtles sleep deep underground. It is fun to play outside in the winter. Put on your coat, your boots, hat, and mittens. The winter snow is good for sledding, skiing, and making snow people. At the end of winter, the air feels warmer. The snow starts to melt, and icicles go drip, 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 and spring is almost here. Okay, children, the next story that we're going to share with you is called When Winter Comes, and the author is Nancy Van Lan. And this is another story that talks about all the things that happen and the things that you do during the winter. And this book is special because it rhymes. So I want you, as I'm reading, I want you to be listening for the rhymes. When Winter Comes by Nancy Van Lan. Where, oh where, do the leaves all go when winter comes and the cold winds blow? The leaves go tumble, tumbling down. Snow is their blanket. Their bed is the ground. Where, oh where, do the flowers go when winter comes and the cold winds blow. Their petals wilt, but their seeds burrow down to rest underneath the leaves' golden crown.
square or where do caterpillars go when winter comes and the cold winds blow? Inside their cocoons, so tightly wound, waiting for spring to bring green to the ground. Where, oh where, do the songbirds go when winter comes and the cold winds blow? South they fly, warm weather bound, to bask in the sun on the soft, mossy ground. Where, oh where, do the field mice go when winter comes and the cold winds blow? Field mice tunnel under the ground and rest in a nest thick with thistle down. Where, oh where, do the dappled deer go when winter comes and the cold winds blow? Oh, Dappled deer wander, making no sound. They rest closely knit under trees in a mound. Where, oh where, do the fish all go when winter comes and the cold winds blow? Deep under they swim when the ponds ice bound. In the dark, they quietly circle around. Where, oh where, does our little one go when winter comes and the cold winds blow? In a warm, warm bed when winter comes round, listening to the wind with its gusty sound, watching the snow as it falls to the ground. Snuggling deep, fast asleep. The next book I'm going to share with you children is called The Snowy Day, and the author is Ezra Jack Keats. And this is a story that talks about fun things, games, and activities that you can do when you're out in the snow. The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, 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 his feet sank into the snow. He walked with his to toes pointing out like this. He walked with his toes pointing in like that. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks and he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. It was a stick, a stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow, plop, on top of Peter's head. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. So he made a smiling snowman. 
and then he made snow angels. He pretended to be a mountain climber. He climbed up a great big tall heaping mountain of snow and he slid all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow and another and still another. He packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. What do you think's going to happen to the snowball? And he thought and he thought and he thought about them. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. While he slept, he dreamt that the sun had melted all the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere and new snow was falling. After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall, and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. Okay, our first craft is going to be making a snowman. We just read the snowy day where Peter went out into the snow and made a snowman. We can't do that, but I'm going to show you how you can actually make two different types of snowmen. The first one we're going to make, you're going to be using your paper plates, your crayons, your clear tape, and your pipe cleaners. So what I've done, this is what it's going to look like when you finish. This is the snowman that we're making. And I've already cut out two of my circles. So I'll put these here. And I'll show you how I cut out the other one. I just cut out the inside of the paper plate. Okay, so we're going to cut out this circle, our third circle for the, for the snowman. There. Okay, very good. So now we have, we have our three circles. And we can assemble our snowman. So we have one for the head, one for the, the middle, and one for the bottom. So I'm going to take my clear tape, I'm going to take them together, I'm going to put a little piece of tape here, and a little piece of tape here, and then so that it's sturdy I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing on the back. I'm going to put a little piece of tape there, and a little piece of tape here. So now we've got the body of our snowman all ready to go. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my snowman some cute curly hair. So I'm going to take my brown crayon and I'm going to just give my snowman some cute curly hair. How about that? There. Okay. Now I'm going to give my snowman his eyes. So I'm going to give him his eyebrows, one, two, and I gave my snowman blue eyes, but you can give your snowman any color eyes you would like. So I'm going to give him some blue eyes. And then usually if you're making a snowman outside, often you put a carrot for his nose. So I took my orange crayon and I'm going to make him, gave him a triangle nose instead of a carrot and we'll color that in. So there's my snowman's nose. And then, again, we want our snowman to be a happy snowman, so I gave my snowman a happy face. And there's his face. And oftentimes, sometimes people take pieces of charcoal or, or things like that or rocks to put buttons down the front of their snowman. So I did that 
to my snowman. And I took my black crayon, so it looks like pieces of charcoal. And I'm going to give him buttons on the front. And I put some buttons down here. And there he is. So he's all dressed up now. There. Then for his arms, I took a black pipe cleaner and I cut it in half so he could have two arms. And I'm just going to turn my snowman over. I'm going to put one on this side and one on this side. And again, I'm going to take my clear tape and I'm just going to tape that on one side and the other side. And there you have, and I bent his arms a little bit just to make him look like he's kind of looking pretty cute. So there's the snowman. Now, I wanted to show you another type of snowman that you can make. So we'll put him over here. There's another type of snowman that I made, and this kind you can actually eat after you make him. If your grown-up, if the grown-up that's with you says you can. And the way I made this snowman is I took three marshmallows, I used some chocolate chips, I used some marshmallow cream, I used some M&M candy, I used some party picks, two pretzel sticks, and some chocolate candies, a chocolate candy for his, for his hat. So these are the ingredients that I used to make my edible snowman. And I'm going to show you what he looks like when you get all done. So here he is. And you could, I used the, the party picks to put the marshmallows together. And then I used my marshmallow cream as the glue to stick the little pieces on. He has a happy mouth, he's got his two eyes, he's got his buttons, and I used also the marshmallow cream to glue his hat on. So when I get all done making him, then I can eat him. So I hope you enjoy making these snowmen. For our next book, children, I'm going to be sharing with you The Mitten. And this book has been retold by Jim Aylesworth. And to share this book with you, I brought a friend. The Mitten, retold by Jim Aylesworth. Once upon a time, there was a happy little boy who loved to play. Yes, he did. In the spring, he loved to climb trees and peek at baby birds. In the summer, he loved to chase the golden butterflies. In autumn, he loved to play in piles of golden leaves. And in the winter, he loved to play in the white, white snow. And every winter, because she loved him, the little boy's grandmother would knit a great warm woolen hat that he could pull down over his ears, a long warm woolen scarf that he could wrap two times around his neck, and a pair of warm woolen mittens for his little hands. And on the cold, cold day of this story, the little boy dressed himself warmly in his hat and his scarf and his mittens, and he went outside to play. He played, and he played, and he played. But when at last he came inside, it was discovered that one of his mittens was lost. Oh no, said the little boy. Don't worry, said the grandmother. We'll find it tomorrow. You've had enough of the cold for one day. And because she loved him, she made him a mug of steaming hot chocolate. Do you like hot chocolate? Mm -hmm. yeah. I like a marshmallow mix. You like marshmallows. In the meantime, just while the little boy was sipping his hot chocolate, a squirrel came along and saw the lost mitten lying in the snow. Brrr, said the squirrel. My toes are cold as ice. The mitten looks so cozy. The warm toes would feel so nice in the mitten. 
So the squirrel crawled into the little boy's mitten to warm his toes. The squirrel found the mitten quite warm and very comfortable. And soon he was so nice and toasty in there that he fell sound asleep. But just then, along came a rabbit. He's going to steal that. You think he's going to steal it? Brrr, said the rabbit. Let me come in. No room, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the rabbit. My toes are cold as ice. Your mitten looks so cozy. And warm toes would feel so nice. Okay, said the squirrel. You can come in. And the rabbit crawled in. It was a bit tight in there for the two. Nevertheless, with a little bulge budging over, they were able to manage. And very soon, they were nice and toasty warm. And they fell sound asleep. But just then, along came a... Fox. fox. Here he comes. Brrr, said the fox. Let me come in. No room, said the rabbit. No room, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the fox. My toes are cold as ice and your mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. Okay, said the rabbit. Okay, said the squirrel. You can come in. And the fox squeezed in. It was really crowded in there now. Nevertheless, the mittens stretched out enough and soon they were nice and toasty warm. <gasps> but then when they had fallen sound asleep, along came a, what's that? A bear. Brrr, said the bear. Let me come in. Do you think he'll fit? No. No. No room, said the fox. No room, said the rabbit. No room, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the bear. My toes are cold as ice. Your mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. Okay, said the fox. Okay, said the rabbit. Okay, said the squirrel. You can come in. The bear squeezed and pushed and squeezed and pushed and squeezed and pushed until at last, do you think he fit? Mm-hmm. Whoop, he got himself in. It was very cramped in there with the four of them all squished together like that. They were still nice and toasty warm and soon they all fell sound asleep. But then along came a little mouse. A mouse. Is he gonna fit? No, let's see. Brrr, said the little mouse in a teeny tiny voice. Let me come in. No room, said the bear. No room, said the fox. No room, said the rabbit. No room, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the little mouse. My toes are cold as ice and your mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. We can't, said the bear. Too full, said the fox. No way, said the rabbit. Impossible, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, said the little mouse. I'm just a little mouse. He's just teeny. He's got a squeeze in tiny. Because he's, he's very tiny. He's very he's tiny. Like yeah. Him. Oh, okay, said the bear. Okay, said the fox. Okay, said the rabbit. Okay, said the squirrel. You can come in. And they all held their breath while the little mouse carefully squeezed into a teeny tiny spot. And for a minute, all was well. Then suddenly, the bear and the fox and the rabbit and the squirrel all had to take a deep breath of air. And as they did, uh-oh, what's going to happen? The mitten burst apart and spilled them all out into the snow. The mitten burst open. What a shame, said the bear. What a shame, said the fox. What a shame, said the rabbit. What a shame, said the squirrel. Oh, it is, said the little mouse. A terrible, terrible shame. Then one by one, the mouse, the bear, the fox, the rabbit, and the squirrel all went off to find another place 
to warm their toes. In the morning, the little boy and his grandmother went out looking for the lost mitten. Soon they came upon the bits of yarn lying on the snow. What could have happened? asked the little boy. I have no idea, said the grandmother. But don't worry, I can knit another. And because she loved him, that's exactly what she did. There you are. All right, now that we've finished reading the mitten, we're going to do the craft to go along with it. And our craft is going to be to make a mitten. And we're going to make, and my friend is going to help me do that. And to make a mitten, what we did is we made some clay dough. And to make clay dough, these are the ingredients that you need. You need one cup of flour, a half a cup of salt, and a little bit of water, about a third of a cup. And you're gonna to mix together the flour and the salt and then slowly add the water until it forms a dough. Then you can dry it in the air or if there's a grown up, you can dry it in the oven at about 225 degrees for about 30 to 60 minutes until it gets hard. Then when it's done, you can paint it. All right, so off we go. This is the way the clay dough looks when you finish. And it looks like dough, looks like regular dough, but you don't want to eat it because there's a lot of salt in here and it tastes terrible and it would give you a terrible stomach ache. So you don't want to eat it, but it's great for doing crafts. So this is what it looks like. Then what we did is we're going to roll out our clay dough. Here you go roll out the clay dough and make it nice and flat and big enough for your hand. Excellent. Good job. Very good. Okay. So once you have it nice and smooth, the way we have it, you can take your hand and make your hand look like a mitten, just like this. And then you want to push your hand and someone can help you to push your hand down really, really hard into the clay dough and push, 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 push it way down in. Okay, lift your hand. And then like magic, when you finish, you end up with an imprint of what looks like a mitten. And after you bake it or let it air dry, you can then paint it whatever color you would like it to be. Thank you for helping me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Was that fun? The next book I'm going to share with you children is called Snip Snip Snow. And the author of this book is Nancy Poydar. And this is a story about a little girl who really loves the snow. Snip Snip Snow by Nancy Poydar. Sophie thought it would never snow. The trees were bare, the ground was hard, the air was crisp, but there was no snow. When Sophie went outside, she had to wear her heavy jacket, her mittens and her hood, but there was no snow. Noses were chilly, cheeks were rosy. You could see your own breath, but there was no Snow. No snow, Sophie said as she stomped into the house after school. It's nice without snow, said Sophie's mom. No snowballs, said Sophie. No snow on the walk, mom said. No snow on the sledding hill, Sophie complained. No shoveling, mom added. No snowman, Sophie grumbled. One evening, the weatherman forecast snow. Snow, sighed Mom. Snow, squealed Sophie. Snow, snow, snow. I'm afraid snow's in the forecast, announced Sophie's dad. We know, said Mom. We know, said Sophie. Sophie. 
Sophie put her boots by the door. She put her sled by her boots. She put out a carrot, a box of raisins, and a hat. Don't forget the broom, said her mom. Don't forget the scarf, said her dad. It looks like you're going to have your snow. Sophie could hardly eat, but she did. Sophie could hardly sleep, but she did. In the morning, though, when she looked outside, the ground was still bare. Where's my snow? Your storm is stalled, said her dad. We might not get it at all. Sophie thought her mom and dad looked too pleased. At school, Sophie asked if they could make their own snow. Please, 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 she begged. Mrs. Bloom let Sophie give everyone a stack of white paper and some scissors. They folded and snipped and folded and snipped. Each snowflake was a surprise. No two were alike in the whole classroom. Sophie made an extra snowflake to take home later. Look at our floor, sighed Mrs. Bloom. We made it snow in here, cried Sophie. Time to clean up, Mrs. Bloom said brightly. Time to plow and shovel, Sophie mumbled. Sophie made a paper snowman out of the scraps by her chair. I'm recycling, she told Mrs. Bloom. Sophie taped her snowman to the window. Oh, she said as she peered outside. Snow! Teeny tiny flakes were wafting through the gray sky. Teeny tiny flakes were falling through the bare branches. They softly settled on the swings and the slide. They softly settled on the school steps and on the windowsill. Shh, said Mrs. Bloom, and she opened the window a little. Hear how quietly they fall. On the way home, the snow came faster. Snowfy caught the flakes in her mitten. No two were alike. They were beautiful. Snow, she yelled to her mom. I know, her mom said. It's beautiful. Shh, whispered Sophie, and she held the door open. Hear how quietly they fall. There's going to be plenty of snow, said her mom. Enough for snowballs, asked Sophie. Enough for your boots, said Mom. Enough for sledding, squealed Sophie. Enough for your snowman, Mom said. And the next morning there was Okay, children, now that we've read Snip Snip Snow, we're going to make a snowflake, just the way they were made in the book. So what you need to do this craft is just a piece of white paper and your scissors. So the first thing that you have to do is take your piece of white paper and you're going to fold it in half. You're going to make a rectangle. Then you're going to take the piece of paper and fold it in half again. Now you have another rectangle. So you're going to hold it by the corner, the point here, the corner with the two folds come together. And you're going to turn your rectangle and cut some off to make it a square. So I'm going to measure this with my eye and figure right about here and I'm going to cut across and I'm going to turn my rectangle into a square. 
The next thing we need to do to make our snowflake is you're going to hold the point and you're going to fold this folded edge over to that folded edge. So you're going to do that just like that. So now you have this kind of a triangle. The next thing you're going to do is take this folded edge and bring it over and line it up with the other folded edge. So you end up with something that kind of looks like an ice cream cone. And if you hold it from the point down the bottom, what we want to do is get rid of this and round it off so that we have a round snowflake. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to round off this point and make it rounded on the top. And this is what you end up with. So now in order to make the design of our snowflake, we're going to make cuts in the folded edges. And there's three folded edges on the paper. The first folded edge is right here. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut out little triangles. I'm going to do triangles. You can really do any shape that you like, but the triangles are easy to cut out. So I'm going to cut a little triangle there, a little triangle there, and another little tri smaller triangle down the bottom here. Okay, so that's that edge. And I think I'll make it a little bit fancy and I'm going to put another one up here. There. Now I've got two other folded edges. I've got this one and this one. So I'm going to take my scissors again and I'm going to cut some triangles out of this folded edge. I'm going to make another one over here. And we have this folded edge. I'm going to make one here. And I'm going to make one here. And I'll put another one over here. Okay, and you can keep going. You can make as many as you would like. You can keep going and make it as fancy as you would like. But then, like magic, when you open it up, you end up with a snowflake. And you can hang it in the window, or you can use it to decorate your room. You can do whatever you would like with it. And if you want to color it, you could always make it a different color. So I hope you enjoy making snowflakes. Thank you, boys and girls, for sharing this time with me. I hope you enjoyed the books that Winnie and I brought you about winter. And I hope that you enjoy and have fun during the winter yourselves. Remember to email me. Any suggestions that you have for books you'd like to hear us read or crafts you'd like us to do on Storytime with Winnie and Nan. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Bye-bye.